What up, good A Push kids? This is uh, Mr. Van Over, uh, Vanny Land here, and we're going to be looking at how you can ace the SAQ. Uh, this is going to be a new method I want you to try, uh, beginning with your uh, third SAQ uh, and the test that we have uh, for the A Push period three. So, this is one of our historical writing strategies, part of my explaining A Push series, and uh, I am definitely acknowledging that this is not mine. Um, I took this from, I got this uh, online from John Burkowski Jr., who evidently got this from somebody named Jessica Jenkins. So I've adapted this to work for the way I'd like it to for my classes. Um, but one of the things that you wanna make sure that you understand when you're doing uh, an SAQ is it's not unlike a lot of writing that you have. The, the strategy that we're gonna talk about is actually very close to uh, what you are used to for answering any kind of short answer question that's not in the A push realm. And it's a, it's a pretty good format. And the idea is, is that you use three sentences for each particular short answer prompt that you have. So if you look at um, any little question you could get asked in any class, you could use a three sentence um, method of answering this. So in ELA, you are used to having to make a claim when you write some sort of, say, persuasive essay. So for example, uh, that's going to be the argument that you're going to prove when you write your response, whatever that might be, an essay or such along those lines. Um, you always have to provide your evidence. So of course, you know, we know those to be the facts and or the paraphrases or quotes you use to support the claim when you're writing in other classes. And a commentary uh, sometimes is used as a way to describe how you explain how the evidence proves your claim, for example, and in what way that that is accomplished. And so if you think about this being something that you normally have to do in English, this is pretty much kind of the same thing that you do in A push with the short answer question. So we call it ACE it. So if you need to remember a nice little acronym and what to do when you get your prompts A, B, and C, is you just remember that you're gonna ace it. And that means you're first gonna answer the question that is asked in the prompt. So there's a prompt, there's a question either embedded in it if it isn't already phrased that way. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna identify your historical claim, your specific answer to that question. And then you're going to use as specific as you can information that's factual. You don't want to use something that's historically inaccurate. And then you're going to cite. You're going to cite your example with something specific that's brief, be, that briefly defines what you're saying. Um, when we say specific factual information, this is a history class. So we want some specific historical example that will somehow define or describe the claim that you're trying to make. Um, for stimulus-based questions, if we have them, um, you'll use some sort of word or image component to try to what they call snag the word or the image. We're gonna talk about that more as we go through the class. For what you're gonna need to know for your test for unit um, two or A push period three, uh, you won't need to do this for this time being. And then your third part of ACE is explain. Uh, you're going to literally explain the choice of your historical claim in response to the question. A big thing to keep, a, keep in mind here is that you're gonna connect your claim using that historical context that the question wants you to have. Uh, and that's where it's kind of gotta be a generic answer right here because each particular question is gonna have its own context. But the thing that I always try to add for my students is to make sure that you understand that you're explaining how and why your claim will best address the intent of the question. If the question says that you're supposed to explain how the um, example that you're choosing is the best example of um, colonial genocide of natives, then you need to literally say this is how this happens. Uh, it, you cannot be too, I call it that, it, you cannot be too obvious in your answers. Don't assume that you're conveying your point because the reader 
is reading this and they're going to know what you mean. You literally have to spell it out and that's where the E and ACE comes from. So with looking at it in just a little more detail, with the answer to the question, um, your component's going to require essentially that you either directly identify a specific historical claim, directly answer with a claim, um, with a direct, direct question or prompt, that's how you're going to do it. They will usually begin with briefly explain one or what have you. Or if there's a generic, his, general historical assertion that you have to be made, that has to be made, and essentially that might be in any kind of prompt that includes any primary source excerpts or secondary source excerpts. Right now, we don't have those things going on. So you don't have to worry about that for, uh, for tomorrow's test. And then you want to offer historical interpretive analysis only if you have something like an image or a graph or something along those lines um, that will be specifically uh, requiring your, your insight, so to speak. So in, in the A part, uh, you're going to have for tomorrow basically the first one, the first bullet there, which is identifying a specific historical claim. Um, and that will uh, allow you to um, understand that you're not going to have to worry about trying to make sure that you have all of the information about a secondary source or primary source in at least your next essay. But later on, we may look at this a little, a little more detail. Um, so again, that might be if you have a prompt that includes a chart or a graph or something along those lines. You're not going to get that for uh, a push period three test. Um, and you're going to make sure that you establish your historical argument in that first sentence. That's really important that under no uncertain terms, that first sentence for your prompt is going to have a direct argument that answers the question the prompt is giving you. And so again, specifically answer whatever question is asked or implied in the prompt for the short answer question. And essentially, it's kind of like if you think about writing an essay in English, this would be like making your thesis statement or any kind of argument claim. Um, or it could be like the idea, think of it kind of like the main idea sentence in a supporting paragraph or the topic sentence maybe if that's how you've learned it in the past. Uh, same idea here for the A part of ACE. Now, if you're offered options, what you have to do is you have to basically answer the question by identifying the option you select. So, for example, in class, we did a particular SAQ that asked you to determine, uh, for example, in what way did the British, the Spanish, or the French uh, influence colonization of North America um, or what effect they had on native groups. Uh, so you'd have to make sure in that particular case that you specify you're answering England or France. So you have to do that in A of ACE in order to make sure that you don't veer off path immediately. So if you're offered options, you have to make sure you identify that option in your response. And if you're asked to determine a similarity and a difference or a comparison and contrast, you have to make sure you directly address both components within the first sentence of ACE. So if that and is there, if it says compare and contrast or similarity and difference, then you have to make sure that you, that you actually um, put both. Uh, if it says change and a continuity, um, you have to do a change and a continuity. If it says or, it's allowing you a little more leeway. Um, although it's confusing as to whether or not you're going to be asked an or in these kinds of circumstances because we're just not sure with yet another kind of redesign on the test. But you should be prepared to answer both in most cases. Um, so if you look here, consider this particular prompt. Briefly explain one example of how contact between Native Americans and Europeans brought changes to Native American societies in the period 1492 to 1700. Your answer for the first sentence of ACE could be the spread of contagious 
European-borne diseases significantly decimated native populations after initial contact in 1492, causing vast changes in their societies. So looking at that a little closer, how does this meet the requirements for a good ACE sentence? Well, it specifically answers the question that is posed in the prompt. There is a question implied there. Um, it is a specific argument that's advanced. In this case, the, the argument is, the example is going to be about contagious diseases. And it links specifically to the prompt by stating that the diseases cause vast changes in society due to decimation. That's something that's really important to understand in this particular case. Because when you're looking at it, we're looking at it from the standpoint that this is a specific argument. There are vast changes in society that we see right here. And that is one of the things it's asking, how contact brought changes. This contact is spreading diseases that are contagious, that decimated, and causing vast changes in societies. Specifically answers what the question has asked of in the prompt. The next part of ACE is C, or cite a specific historical example, and I can't stress that one enough. So you're literally, your second sentence of prompt A would be that you have to require, it would require you to have an explanation of what your claim is in the first sentence. And generally, this would be something that contains a specific factual piece of information or historical evidence that is directly relevant to what the prompt has asked you and the answer. So when you're looking at citing this, for what you're gonna have to do um, on your test for A push period three is you're gonna have to really kind of specifically define or describe a claim um, that we're gonna look at in my example in just a minute. Um, if there was any kind of reading passages uh, or excerpts, stimulus, pa sim stimulus excerpts, um, you'd have to maybe describe a specific historical exempt, uh, excuse me, event um, that proves your assertion is correct. In the case of what we'll do, um, you still have to come up with something specific and historical that proves basically that's a good piece of evidence as proof of what your assertion or your claim is. Um, and don't worry about snag a word or phrase right now. We're going to talk about that later. Um, and as far as if you have a list of options, like we did with our samples that we did where you could choose like say Spain or England, um, you would want to define or describe what your option is with specific examples. Now if we go back to what we just looked at for just a moment, consider this one again. Briefly explain one example of how contact between Native Americans and Europeans brought changes to Native American societies between 1492 and 1700. So there's our first sentence that we'd already looked at. If we go to the next one, here is how we get our C, our citation. Long existing European diseases, such as smallpox and influenza, caused an estimated 90% of the native populations to perish due to a lack of natural immunities that come with exposure. So we have a specific response that is a specific historical example that references the spread of the European diseases that we said in our first sentence, and it explained how it brought the vast changes in society because 90% died. And so think of it like this. This is a way of saying, hey, here's my first sentence is my original point. The second sentence now is real example of why my original point is actually correct. This is something that specifically shows what I said was correct. And that's what you want to kind of look at. And then for E, it's really simple. In ACE, the E is explain or expand your information. So explain how the claim and the historical example best addresses the prompt. And that should connect or tie back to the answer or the prompt that you've given. And you want to make sure that you include some sort of direction, direct connection to the historical skills that you're looking at. So going back to our question, there's our first sentence, there's our second sentence. Now for prompt A, our third sentence is gonna be the explanation. 
Native population losses weakened the ability of natives to defend themselves against European invasion, allowing for European explorers and conquerors to easily subjugate survivors and to exploit their lands, exploit their lands through colonization. Blam. It basically right there says this is what happened and how the spread of contagious European-born diseases significantly decimated native populations. And it's because there was no um, immunity that they had developed uh, because they weren't exposed to that. And that changes it through uh, the inability for the natives to really defend themselves, uh, allowing for European conquerors to come in and just com completely take over. So you can see here that if you're looking at this from a standpoint of what does this do for the E part of ACE, it is the final sentence that explains how the claim and the specific historical example brings changes to native societies. And in this case, the disease and the decimation caused the natives to have fewer numbers to resist European domination. So again, it's really important that you understand that in this particular example, this is how the claim tells the reader that this is how the claim is true because I've now explained that there's my claim, I've got my specific historical example, and now I've actually explained like the how or the why. I've explained in this case that disease and decimation is the cause of the natives to have fewer numbers and that they can't resist European domination. So that in a nutshell is the ACE method. It's really particularly um, easy. Now, here's an example of a full ABC short answer res response using ACE for, and what you do is you use it for A, for B, and for C. And that's something to keep in mind. Each prompt, A, B, and C, should basically be three sentences. Uh, and that's what I'm going to look for in your SAQ from your test, um, is that you use the ACE method. And um, that's kind of how it will be graded based upon how specific of an example can you give, how well do you explain it, and how direct are you with your claims. You know, whatever. But I want you to think of a couple things for guidelines for history. Always be explicit. Always use specific historical evidence and avoid answering in any kind of just generalization if you can. Now, don't, don't answer if you can't think of anything specific, probably because what you might think isn't specific enough might be just fine. But you want to make sure you at least go for it somehow, but you want to try to avoid being general. Um, if you have excerpts, never quote from those. Um, I can read those, so you don't want to provide those quotes for me. Um, and other phrases that you can avoid are things like according to the historian, or as seen in the ex excerpt, or as written by. Uh, you don't want to do that. You also don't want to use any personal pronoun ever, ever, ever. No I, my, we. You can't use, you can't refer to the United States as we or our, because we aren't around then. And um, we're, we're definitely looking at the, that in a, in a past sense, which leads to this one where sometimes, depending on the, on the class you're in, some teachers want you to use active voice and active verbs. I don't necessarily think that applies well with a history class. We're talking about the past and things that happened. So if you're writing a historical thing as if it is literally happening, it just doesn't make sense to me. So I am more of a fan of using passive voice um, because it's talking about the past, but you know, some people think I'm crazy. Um, make sure you're confident with your claim and your assertion. Just state it as a matter of fact. You don't have to say my opinion is or anything along those lines. I know it's your opinion because you're writing it. Um, and try to be very concise. See, look at this general example. Europeans brought over diseases to the Americas and it had an impact on native populations. That wouldn't answer the prompt, prompt we were looking at. What you want to go for is contagious European diseases decimated native populations. It's much more specific. And your general SAQ guidelines, remember, you need to label each part in the left margin of the box. You don't have to do it outside the box, but if you do, it gives you just that tiny little bit of room. Don't ever skip any lines or double line. Um, don't indent. We're not looking at proper indentation here. 
don't write any introduction or conclusion because this is not an essay. Um, but you do have to write in complete sentences. Remember, no bullet points or any kind of fragments. It has to be a complete thought. And complete your tasks, each task in order. You want to make sure it's A, B, and C. And make sure you label A, B, and C. If you don't label, um, it makes a little part of your soul die. And then also in the real exam, you can write any of the three or four that you may have to write for the real AP exam in any order. In my class, if I give you multiple ones, I don't want you to do it that way. But in the real exam, one strategy is to start off with the one that you definitely have the most confidence in being able to answer it first. 